What's up guys, in today's video we're going to talk about a few little tips and tricks which is going to help you take your bench press to the next level. Now it's a little bit different to what I would usually talk about and go through because I'm all about hypertrophy and basically trying to maintain as much tension on the working muscle as possible, whereas strength training is a little bit of a different ball game. And to be honest with you, I am no expert at strength training. I know some stuff, but I'm not an expert. So I teamed up with Mark Bell, you may have heard of him before, he's a well-renowned power lifter he knows a thing or two about lifting as much weight as you possibly can do so he very kindly took me through a little session at his facility in sacramento now i'm going to let mark do a lot of the talking in this video but i will chip in every now and then just to give you my thoughts on some of the points which he has raised so the first thing and probably one of the most important things which we'll start off with is elbow placement well he's built up a good chest right some pretty good pecs there, I gotta admit. So, what he's doing is, is great for building up the pecs, but then it can also be dangerous to our shoulders. The only times that we really want to bench the weight suspension is with sub maximal weights. Weights that we can handle pretty easy and weights that are just kind of chunk change for us, we'll call it, right? Anytime we want to start <laughs> to explore trying to go heavier and we want to really try to push the envelope, then we need to bench with our elbows in closer to our body. Down. Yeah, you want to try it for him, he's stuck his back, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to drop our forearm onto our bicep, like that, right? We're trying to drop our tricep if he turns to the side here. We're trying to drop our tricep and turn to the back. Uh, look at how big his lats are. We're trying to drop our tricep onto our lap. Now this is quite different to what I would usually do. Whenever I'm barbell pressing, particularly when it comes to incline barbell pressing, I do tend to flare the elbows quite a bit. Is flaring the elbows bad? Well, it really depends upon what the goal is when you're doing that lift. So when I'm flaring the elbows, particularly with the incline barbell press, it helps me to maintain more tension on the upper chest. But in order to do that safely, obviously I have to restrict the range of motion which I'm working through and I can't lift as heavy as I can possibly lift. I have to be careful with it. And I often will not push to complete failure because that's when form slips and that's when the risk of injuring my shoulder is often a lot higher. So you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the lift? Are you lifting for strength or are you lifting to maximize tension on the chest? When I lay back on the bench, this is where things are gonna get a little different. I like to lay on the bench completely flat first because I like to establish what feels flat to me. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an arch in my back, but not in my lower back. The lower back is automatically gonna be arched when you put your feet down on the floor. So as you'll notice, I'm gonna get my back flat. I'm gonna keep my feet up on the bench. When I put my feet down on the ground, there'll be an automatic arch to my lower back, especially the bigger that your butt is, the more of an arch and more of a sway you're gonna get to that lower back. I'm really concentrating on the upper back. I'm concentrating on pinching the shoulder blades together. But it's not enough just to pinch the shoulder blades together because when people tend to pinch their shoulder blades together, they go like this, and that's upward. And now we're gonna bench press. When we get stuck in the bench, because our shoulder's up, we're gonna bench like this. And we're gonna start to have shoulder pain that way. We'll have a lot of internal rotation. The shoulder will be stuck like this. The feet need to be planted firmly. People don't realize that your, your entire body is involved in bench pressing. A lot of times shoulder pain comes from being in poor position and also not using your legs. Your shoulder pain comes from not using your legs. Sounds weird, but you need to be pushing that way the entire time and upward. So as you're going to see, you can see here, this girl's doing it perfectly right here. This is an amazing demonstration of the arch that I was talking about in the upper back. The lower back's kind of automatically going to get arched because her feet are down. But her feet are planted so firmly, she that her legs aren't moving at all. So the three very important things which you need to bear in mind is foot positioning, firmly planted into the ground, upper back arched, and shoulders retracted. As I bring the weight down, I'm trying to bend the bar. And as I come up, I'm trying to pull the bar apart. So I'm here. Elbows in. Elbows in, elbows out. When you 
when you're taking the weight out of the rack and you're ready to bench press, you want to think about bending the bar. You want to squeeze the bar as hard as you can and you want to try to go like this. Again, that's going to set your shoulders right in the right spot. So this was also very interesting because, again, when I'm lifting in order to maximize tension on the chest, I'm actually thinking about bringing my hands together as much as possible. So I'm trying, the intent is to almost crush the bar. So I'm doing that to increase tension. Whereas when it comes to strength training, you're actually trying to bend the bar. So you have the intention of doing that. Now Mark has actually come up with a band called the Slingshot, which can be used whenever doing bench press dips or press ups, and it can help not only if you have any shoulder injuries to alleviate the tension and stress on the shoulder joint itself, but it can also help improve your overall weight lifted by around 10 to 15%. And I definitely felt like when I was using it, my form and technique was a lot better. It actually helped keep my elbows together, and I'm sure it definitely helped improve the amount of weight which I lifted overall. How much does a slingshot help? I usually tell people it helps by about 10%. So if you're like Mike and you bench over 300 pounds, um, it's gonna help you by about 30 pounds. It sounds like a tremendous amount. It's like, oh shit, well now it's doing everything for me. Well, it's giving you a kick out of the bottom. But it's not doing everything for you. Okay. Right there, yep. There Good, is. and then push up and back on the way up. Up and back. <laughs> Yep, there we go, one more. Nice, that is picture perfect. Yep. Nice, good press strong all the way through the top. Yep, yep. work on that block out, work on that sticking point. Drive through it every time. Yep, there you go, good. When I did the 140 kilograms, without, this was with no technique whatsoever, this was me just pressing how I would usually press. I struggled, and you can see that, that that one rep felt like I was trying to push the weight up for about 30 seconds. After he taught me every single thing which I've mentioned previously, and he's mentioned previously, the lift was completely different. I got my body into the right position. I was thinking completely differently how I had thought the first time I did it, and you can see I got two reps out easily. Uh, if anything, I probably could have pushed for a third rep if I was a little bit more fresh. We want to try to uh, fix these things through reps. And I don't mean necessarily sets of 10, but like something like five sets of three reps. Five sets of three reps, well, what does that do? That gives us 15 opportunities to smooth out the rough part of the lift that's not working for us. If we were to reverse uh, that number, if we did three sets of five, the problem with the five reps, and it's not really too problematic, but it is problematic in a way, uh, reps, you know, four, four and five, you're probably going to be pre-fatigued, and it's not going to be the be best representation of your strength, whereas when you're doing the sets of three, you might be able to use a little bit heavier weight, challenge yourself a little heavier weight, multiple sets, you have a large amount of rest in between, and you're able to kind of build upon that, and you're able to work on your form and technique uh, with weights that are above just sub-maximal. If you're only using like 70%, it's gonna be really hard to uh, refine your technique when you get the big weights on there. Once you get over 90%, everything's gonna be all screwed up. Again. Now it's important you take into account how you're gonna fit this into your training programming. Because as he says, if you're gonna do five sets of three, and you're gonna need to allow yourself three to four minutes rest in between each set in order to get the best out of each set, you're probably looking at about 20 minutes at least, which is just gonna be on barbell bench pressing. And let's say, for example, you only have an hour to train, then it only leaves you with another 40 minutes to just focus on the rest of your session, whether that be hypertrophy focused or can continue to be strength focused. So for most of you guys out there who are looking to get stronger and bigger at the same time, I would probably allocate a large chunk of your session to improving your strength on the barbell bench press. And then for the remainder of the session, let's say, for example, 40 minutes, you can then focus on reps and sets in the hypertrophy range, so eight plus reps, and then you know focus on other muscle groups as well. I wouldn't recommend doing chest just in one session. I'd combine it with something else, but that's completely up to you. So hopefully this video has been beneficial. I can tell you without a doubt, I've learned a hell of a lot just from being with him for that short period of time. And even within my own training programming, I wanna see how much I can lift now with a barbell bench press. 
I can tell you it, it just felt so much more comfortable and I was able to get a lot more out of the lift just by changing my elbow positioning and just thinking very differently about how I was performing the lift. So you saw there I was getting you know around two to three reps on 140 kilograms i would like to see myself getting you know five to six reps on that and obviously that's only going to come with practice so i'll keep you guys updated on whether or not i do that so thanks for watching if you want to see more of mark's videos i've put a little link below to his youtube channel and yeah very very interesting hopefully i will be back there and get some more tips from him so thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys soon